Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and co-parents of all ages, this podcast is for you. Introducing in the center ring the amicable divorce expert, Judith Weigel. This is the last Wednesday of the month when, as you know, we do our celebrity divorce series. We're going to be exploring Chloe Kardashian. Trust and forgiveness are her brand. Chloe wasn't married, but she had the same relationship challenges in her two very famous relationships that all of us have in ours, possibly, at some time or another. And those issues are trust and forgiveness. No, Chloe was never married to her two giant relationships, pun intended, to two NBA players, Lamar Odom, LA Lakers, and Tristan Thompson with the Cleveland Cavaliers at the time they met and started their relationship. But the challenges she faced with both celebrity basketball players were no different than those faced in a marriage, trust and forgiveness. Trust is something we all deal with in our relationships, as you know, regardless of high profile versus low profile people. But when you're dealing with celebrities, when you're dealing with entertainers and sports figures or entertainers, it's different. It really is different. And it's different based on the age of the person. You know, when we're younger, when we're in our 20s, we're a little more reckless, right? And so when you put fame and money to uh, to people's profile, they're going to be even more reckless. The ego that it takes to be a celebrity, the ego that it takes to be a sports star is huge. And ego defines us. So even if you're dealing with corporate people, you know, corporate people are the new celebrities now corporate stars. And and so there's ego there too. So strap in for the ride. Uh, But anyway, trust and forgiveness are something we all have to deal with. Trust has to be a cornerstone of any relationship, but meaning what? Trust that your partner will remain monogamous without a doubt. Trust that your partner will be honest in their behavior, will never keep something from you, and will always have your back. Yes, those are big trust areas. So let's define trust for a second. Trust is a firm belief in the character, strength, or truth of someone, and that they will behave in a certain way, i.e. monogamously. And trust that uh, trust a person. You put your trust in a person in whom uh, confidence is placed. You have a trusted person in your life. For example, if you trust someone, you believe that they're honest and sincere, and will not deliberately do anything to harm you. And when people have adverse aspects to their personality, to their behavior, they don't really think that they're harming you. They actually think, well, you know, this is just me and this is what I need and I'll still be right for my mate. Okay, no, that's so not right. It's not even funny. People say love is blind, but what about trust? Why is it easy to place trust in someone that everyone else sees as untrustworthy? We can say we trust anyone. There is a difference, though, in misplaced trust as opposed to earned trust. And I want you to think about this for a second. Misplaced trust. We're placing trust in someone that everybody else is telling us is the worst person we could possibly put trust in. Earn trust. We have to know somebody a while. We have to watch them go through situations. They have to earn our trust. You can't just give trust to someone that you really want to have sex with. And that's what we do. We put trust in people that we have this physical uh, attraction to. And we're so off when we do that. When you know someone for a while, have seen that person in the trenches of tough decision-making and have witnessed a pattern of ethical, thoughtful, considerate, and honest decision-making, 
it makes sense that your trust be placed in that person. To put trust in someone as a potential mate while only knowing them for a month before marrying them, we're going to get to Chloe and Lamar, trust would be based on a dream not on reality, because it takes time to create a true reality. How much time is up for conjecture? We don't know. More than a month? Absolutely for sure. I'm referring to Chloe's courtship and marriage to Lamar Oden in 2009. They met in August and married in September. Because I unabashedly keep up with the Kardashians, I always have, fascinated in this family. I don't care what anybody says about they had nothing to base their their fame and, and success on. You know what? You're so wrong. I nailed this early on when the Kardashians came on the show. I mean, I knew about Bob Kardashian and... I didn't really know about Chris, but then I learned about her promoting Bruce Jenner when they met and how success, successful she was in doing that. These people masterminded careers for the most part. Okay, maybe maybe Courtney doesn't really have a career. Chloe, on the fence. But definitely the other girls have big-ass careers. I was truly scared. So I'm watching the Kardashians and I was truly scared for Chloe about marrying Lamar after only knowing each other for one month. Falling in love at first sight is fabulous. I love this. You're on an emotional high. Your endorphins have truly kicked in. But this feeling isn't sustainable. In Chloe's defense, she hadn't really dated a lot of people at that point, we learned about that on the show, and didn't have the experience of separating the initial wave of intense emotions from the morphing of those emotions into a more relaxed feeling of contentment and security, even in the face of disagreements, because you're going to disagree about stuff during the relationship, but, you, but, but the contentment and the security shouldn't waver when you're doing that. So let me just briefly read from an article in Us Magazine about Chloe and Lamar. So yes, it was pretty much love at first sight when Chloe Kardashian met former NBA player Lamar Oden, Oden, Odom, sorry about that. The pair tied the knot in September of 2009 after just a month of dating in a romantic ceremony that was featured on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. For the next four years, the twosome were in wedded bliss, getting matching tattoos, God, I remember that, buying a home, gorgeous, and trying to have babies, a journey that was documented on their hit E! reality series, Chloe and Lamar. It wasn't a hit. It only lasted, what, a year, a season? It was not a hit. You, these spinoffs don't really work. But anyway, we saw it on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, too. Their fairy tale romance unraveled in late 2013. However, when Odom fell into a vicious cycle of addiction, drugs, that would ultimately end with the athlete coming close to death after overdosing at a legal brothel in Nevada. The couple split in 2013 ahead of Odom's hospitalization, but Kardashian called off their divorce in late 2015, choosing instead to focus on her former partner's health. If this isn't an example, this is me talking now, if this isn't an example of forgiveness, I don't know what is. Generosity, putting Lamar's health above her disappointment in the relationship. I mean, Chloe was an absolute saint. She really was. Not many people can do this. I mean, think about your own situations. Whatever type of relationship fraud, I call it, going on, it's not just um having other partners. It's just not infidelity. I mean, we can have relationship fraud with anything, gambling, addiction, pornography. By May 2016, he had recovered and the fashion guru, okay, well, that's stretching it a little bit. The fashion guru, because she has that, that clothing line, filed for divorce, and I love you, Chloe, filed for divorce once more, fi finalizing it seven months later in December. 
They went for a period of time without speaking. Okay, that makes sense. But after a new tell-all book from Odin and multiple cheating scandals on the part of Kardashian's beau, Tristan Thompson, the pair are back in touch. You know, that's interesting, isn't it? That <clears throat> all these things could be happening. And yes, you know, you go on this roller coaster. Um and then eventually you can talk again. So any of you, list, all of you listening that are going through any type of infidelity, any type of relationship fraud, you might very easily get back, I mean, be able to talk again. Don't think it's completely done. And especially if you have children, you have to start talking again. For the sake of those kids, you have to. Lamar, <clears throat> excuse me, Lamar cheated with drugs, not women. But cheating is cheating. Trust is trust, especially since a branding mark, and this is very important, of the Kardashian family is a no-drug policy. These people don't do drugs. They drink while drinking is a drug, but they don't do other drugs. And this is everybody in the family. So that was a big issue that Lamar didn't talk about this initially. But you know what? A month and you're getting married? Okay, how much is there to talk about? You've got to talk about the wedding, too. He hadn't shared addiction issues with Chloe before they married. How much time does one have to share big stuff in a month-long relationship? Well, you know what? No, not very much. Chloe filed for divorce, but for Chloe to put her disappointment in the marriage aside and dismiss the divorce or stall it, I, I'm not sure Us Magazine was right. I think it was stalled and then reignited. And focus on taking care of Lamar was a Herculean, Herculean act of selflessness. And it really was. Any of you listening to this episode, have you been cheated on? Have you had your trust squashed? Have you been able to forgive something huge that happened in one of your relationships? To look at your partner, who is going to look very differently to you after the indiscretion has come out, and to put your feelings aside to help your partner deal with an external issue that is now affecting your relationship, this is incredibly hard. I think Chloe was amazing. All right, let's go to Chloe's most recent relationship with Tristan Thompson. Yes, he was formerly with the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team when they met, but he was with many other teams as well. He committed infidelity more than once while with Chloe. While she was pregnant with their first child, oh my God, I can't believe this when people do that. I mean, I'm not being judgmental. I really don't mean to be that way, but it is so shocking when your partner um, is with other women while you're pregnant. I, I mean, I God, that's horrible. If you need your partner anymore, it's when you're pregnant. And then during the pregnancy with the second child, it was a surrogacy, but it happened again. Okay, so I want to read you some excerpts from a People magazine article about this because they say it really well. So, Khloe Kardashian is now a mom of two. Yay. On July 13th, 2022, uh, a rep for Kardashian confirmed that she and Tristan Thompson were expecting their second child together, but noted that the pair are not back together and haven't spoken since December outside of co-parenting needs, so December of 2021. Back in December of 2018, Kardashian announced that she and Thompson were expecting their first child together. My greatest dream realized, Kardashian wrote on Instagram, alongside a black and white bump picture. We are having a baby. I have been waiting and wondering, but God had a plan all along. He knew what he was doing. I simply had to trust in him and be patient. Okay, you can't see my face, but God is a man. And um, this is where she's trusting. Okay, so people believe in God and people still think there is a gender attachment to that. But there's trust here. And I think this is amazing. And I think more than likely, 
The whole Kardashian family, maybe they don't go to church every day, but I do think they're spiritually connected. Call me crazy, but I think they do. And when you're spiritually connected, you either say God or you say higher power or you say something. But this is people's guiding strength, and I don't want to take this away from her. So trust, there's where a lot of her trust comes from. Baby True was born in April 2018, and it wasn't long after her arrival that the new mom revealed she wasn't ruling out having more kids. Goodness, I don't know. I love True so much, and I'm so complete because of her, she wrote on Twitter in response to a fan. I could only imagine another one would make me feel even more complete, but I just don't know. I guess only time will tell and whatever God wants for me more trust. The former Revenge Body, I loved that, by the way. I loved her Revenge Body video series. The former Revenge Body host publicly discussed looking into surrogacy options in June 2021, around when she and Thompson called it quits. She revealed that she did have, uh, that she did have a surrogate, and then it fell through. From the birth of her firstborn to the arrival of her son, here's everything to know about Chloe's two kids. Okay, let me stop a second. So I'm not sure Tristan was going through therapy at this point. So they're calling it quits. And then they're talking about, she's talking about having another child through a surrogate. Well, maybe she was thinking about having one on her own. I mean, obviously people do that, right? True was born in Cleveland, Ohio on April 12th, 2018, days after news broke that Thompson had allegedly been unfaithful to Kardashian. The idea for the baby's name was, oh, this is interesting, was initially a suggestion from Kardashian's grandmother, Mary Jo. She told me it was my great grandfather's first name and my grandfather's middle name. It stuck with me for my entire pregnancy and was the only one I couldn't get out of my head, the good American founder recalled. This is the the clothing line. I love that it's a family name and I can't wait to get back to LA so True can finally meet MJ, her grandmother, in person. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, Kardashian shared how grateful gratitude, love this virtue, shared how grateful she was feeling about being able to spend more time with her daughter. Now I feel like I'm kind of, I've kind of found my rhythm. This is my new normal and I am really appreciating the reset button and all the time that I do get to spend with True. I try to find the positive in everything, and with all the negative, there's also a lot of positive as well. Okay, this is really amazing. So she has a spiritual belief in God. This is where she gets her foundation and trust. Now she tries to find the positive in anything with all the negative going on around her. I mean, this is, this, this truly is an incredible human being. You put somebody else way before your needs. And I think it gives you a different drive in life. This is Chloe talking. True has definitely made me softer. She added, despite the ups and downs between Kardashian and Thompson over the years, the former Cleveland Cavaliers player has remained an active part of True's life. The focus is on True. And they have the same goals for her, a source told People in People magazine in April 2022. They want her to have the happiest childhood possible. Okay, this is the hardest thing for all co-parents to do. You have to put aside the reasons for the divorce in order to co-parent. And you can't do it immediately. You just, it takes time. Getting to know somebody takes time. Getting over the reason or dealing with the reason you're getting divorced takes time. And getting yourself mentally fit to be a co-parent in, it just in the face of divorce. This is so incredibly difficult. So here's what I say to everybody. 
go through the grieving stage before you file for divorce. Really go through all the stages stages of anger, resentment, bitterness, um, blame, then acceptance. I mean, you have to go through it all and you have to get to a point saying, you know, my spouse is only human. And human beings do things they apologize for. Human beings do things to hurt people. I mean, they don't do do things to purposely hurt people. They do things that hurt people. And you have to get over it. You have to realize that you do too. That you do things that have hurt people as well. Maybe not in the sa- on the same level, but hurt is hurt, you know. And so to get to that point of acceptance and forgiveness, it clears the path for your heart to heal. And we all have to do it. And it takes time. And you don't know how much time. So do the best you can while you're healing, while you're grieving. And make it your goal to turn all of your feelings around so that you can give your kids the best life possible because that's where it's at. You can make all the financial decisions you want and it's over and things are divided, but the kids aren't. And that's where the real test comes for all of you who have children. You're all going to be little Hercules. You really are. Back to the article. On July 13th, 2022, a rep for Kardashian confirmed to people that she was expecting her second child with Thompson by a surrogate. Okay, real forgiveness on the way. We can confirm true. I don't know about the trust, but we can confirm true. We'll have a sibling who was conceived in November of 2021, the rep shared. Chloe is incredibly grateful to the extraordinary surrogate for such a beautiful blessing. Would like to ask for kindness and privacy so that Chloe and can focus on her family. The, the baby was conceived by a surrogate because it was revealed to Chloe in the public that Tristan was having a baby with someone else in December. This is huge. I mean, everything about this is huge. This keeps happening. So, yes, there was forgiveness, but I did... I did see on one of the new, one of the Kardashian episodes that went on Hulu. So they left E, now they're on Hulu. And there was a scene where Chloe and Tristan, after they had conceived True and True was born, they were in the gym in, in the house and very happy. Uh, he was going to therapy. Uh, I guess trying to work out this issue with being not monogamous. We'll get to this in a minute. On August 5th, 2022, people confirmed that Kardashian and Thompson's baby boy had arrived. A source told people that Kardashian was on cloud nine and taking her time in choosing a moniker for the new arrival. Chloe hasn't shamed, shared a name yet, the source said. She's taking her time with the name. She wants it to be just right. The Kardashian season two, this is on uh, Hulu now, um, it, Chloe welcomes their son. He looks just like True. Uh, Kim can be heard yelling as the surrogate brought Kardashian's second child into the world. While Kardashian had been on the fence about allowing Thompson to even visit the hospital for the birth of his son, it was revealed in the episode on Hulu that the basketball player was present for the big day. This is forgiveness. And this is amazing. I keep saying this. It's amazing. Ever since December, it's been this dark cloud looming over me, Chloe says. Every single day, I've been feeling depressed and sad. And now that my son is here, I get to move on and I get to enjoy. It's almost like I get to close that chapter and be done with this trauma and put it behind me, she said in a confessional. And I'm kind of thinking the relationship is over with Tristan and Chloe, although I'm still catching up with some of these episodes. 
So unlike life after Lamar, there is no real life after Tristan as they are co-parenting. I am sure this is hitting all parents listening like a ton of basketballs. Not only does there have to be grieving of the relationship that will never be as Chloe would like, but there is ongoing communication and connection as co-parents. I think Chloe is up for the challenge. It appears that her love for her children surpasses her hurt from Tristan. Chloe's strong, forgiving, compassionate, yet self-respecting nature kicked in to the point where she wouldn't settle for being mistreated. In Tristan's case, she trusted. He breached the trust. She forgave. And the requirement uh, of him going was the requirement of him was going to therapy and she was willing to give the relationship another try you know with that therapy commitment well Tristan is who he is he may not be monogamous he might like the adventure of cheating without understanding that he's preventing a marriage from taking place by his actions there maybe he doesn't want a marriage though there's something to be said about ego, as I said earlier, and how ego circumvents logic and compassionate understanding of what your actions will do. The thrill of the hunt might be where Tristan is. Chloe wants to be a mom and a wife. These are their individual values. Maybe Tristan just has to be on the hunt. And Chloe is wanting to be in a stable relationship. Chloe comes from a tight knit family. Maybe Tristan doesn't. And, you know, we don't know a lot about Tristan's family. But for all of us, we have to take the time to get to know the person we want to carve out a life with. And we have to realize that people have their secret sides. People are fallible, and for people to change their unhealthy ways, they have to want to. And when I say unhealthy ways, I mean having other relationships while you're in one that looks like a committed relationship. You know, change has to come from within. They have to, they have to recognize, people have to recognize that they need to change if their behavior is against the health and welfare of their relationship. Lastly. And most importantly, sometimes people can't change and there's nothing we can do about it. So holding on to toxic feelings about someone who has committed relationship fraud more than once is only going to make the perpetrated sicker than the one who committed the fraud. Trust and forgiveness can't have one without the other. Even if it means the relationship is over, your feelings will go on. Make them feelings of gratitude, appreciation, and a willingness to grow in the most hurtful of situations. So that's it for this episode today. Thank you for joining me. Please share your comments. Please reach out to me through my email, Judith at the amicable divorce expert dot com, Judith at the amicable divorce expert dot com. And as always, have an amicable day. That's our show for today. Thank you for joining us. Be good to yourselves, be kind to your spouse, and cherish your children above all else. <laughs>